What's up, everybody? Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and I'll be reviewing Friday Night Smackdown-ish. Um, and I, I guess I kind of got almost everything in this one, just almost of, this is why I don't. <laughs> but, uh, did, uh, look, this, this opened up, Hardy introduces the returning AJ Styles, and I had to note, if I didn't have the volume up, I would have checked in on Dalton Castle. Because he, he looked too much like Dalton Castle. And Cedra has said it looked like Dalton Castle and Freddie Mercury had a baby. That's what it looked. I'm like, okay, you know, I guess I could see that. But I just, you know, going on cosmetically speaking only, only, not trying to be insulting, but my, the first thought that jumped in my head was, this looks like the great value Dalton Castle. But he introduced AJ Styles, and I'm like, why, why did they need him to do this? You know, they got the epic ring announcer that announced him. I, I just didn't, I mean, I, I guess Nashville and he's popular and they just did it to do it. I don't know, but I had to note that AJ left as a rising heel and months later he returns as a baby face to cheer. I mean, WWE will, the fans are going to cheer someone coming out until they see who it is. And then they'll boo if they don't like them. Okay, cool. Um, but I was like, AJ was being kind of a monster heel. He was getting there. Uh, so, like, how, you know, he got a good reaction, you know, and after his entrance, the fans, they, they chanting his name and He's all pumped up for sure. He's feeling it. He's there. The fans are lit for AJ. I mean, it's taking him a while to even speak. So when he does speak, he mentions that he regrets his heel status, but he wants to build a new future. And then Carmelo Hayes comes out and I'm like, he's got enough with Knight and Andrade. I'm like, w w what's this? So Hayes decides to insult AJ, you know, elderly and a legend and things like that. And AJ tries to, he's like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to toss you a bone. Let me warn you about LA Knight. You know, it's like, I've done a few things. We've, he's done a few things. He showed up at my house and, and Hayes rejects him. Say he doesn't take advice from quitters. I'm like, okay. All right. And AJ kind of about the same thing. And so eventually AJ is like, you know, if you were him, you'd be the U.S. champ. Now, wouldn't you? Carmelo had to fire back. Like, if you were phenomenal, wouldn't you be the undisputed world champion? And I'm like, okay, they're going back and forth. Okay. Carmelo has learned to slow it down, collect his thoughts. AJ offers a batch to settle this argument. He doesn't care. And he tries to leave. LA Knight's music hits. Okay, he comes out and he's like, we've seen this before. Things getting a little tough and you got to leave. You got to cut and run. And I'm like, mm, that's kind of all heels when they're getting it. But oh, okay. Um, and so Knight, he's like, look, um, you can do, you know, one or two things. You can go in there and, you know, I can stomp you out. That's, that's just going to happen. You know, or you, or, you know, or you can go in there and take up the challenge and AJ can stomp you out. But either way, you're going to get stomped out. And uh, it kind of pains me to say this. But LA Knight cut a nice Steve Austin promo. And literally, that's the style of promo that will keep the, the people... Uh, uh, you know, tuned in to you. It'll keep their attention. It'll keep the cheers. It'll, it's short term. It's right there. It's in your face. You know, uh, and the fans are pretty much, that's what they're accepting. So it ain't, it ain't high brow they want. They want that low, medium brow. You know, when I get done whooping your ass, I'm going out in the town, name a popular spot. I'm going to go there. I'm going to sip some stuff. I'm going to get a little lit. I'm going to have a good time. And then I'm out. 
And they're like, yay, you mentioned us. You said you're going to get drunk like us. And then you're going to have a great time. They're good. So he says, look, if you, um, Carmelo Hayes, can defeat AJ Styles, then I'll make a compelling argument to Nick Aldis, you know, in favor of you in that U.S. title shot. And I'm kind of like, okay, all right, we'll see how this go. So then Carmelo Hayes versus AJ Styles with LA Knight sitting at ringside. And Knight didn't do anything. He did not interfere in this match. That's the baby face shouldn't interfere unless there's, you know, gripe. And he kind of does from last week when he got blasted over that trunk. So I was like, he does owe him. And so look, I'm curious, what is WWE working on? Because commentary mentions AJ Styles' post work in TNA and in the NWA. I'm curious, you know, um, I'm going to skip a little bit and then go back. Um, commentary also mentioned pro wrestling Noah. I'm like, what is going on? Because, you know, WWE is isolated. That's their style. Nothing exists. You had no past. You know, Paul Levesque take over and all of a sudden, you know, People were once five years old. They were once teenagers. They, they had a past. They didn't just, you know, get burbed out as grown ass men and just show up on the screen to wrestle WWF and or E. So, I mean, I'm curious to what they're working up to. But Hayes, he, during the match, he had in kind of in kind of the opening, but he had a great springboard 180 clothesline. It was a nice one kneeling over the chest for a two count very arrogant pin very as some would say cocky um so that that good work um and i had to note that hayes has learned to slow things down and milk certain moments for the fans to catch up so that he can take in what he's doing i like that i like where that's going andrade and some others have been working on him really well and I had a good job on commentary for explaining what we didn't see during the break that the doc is checking on AJ's leg it might be a sprain and that's what the doc told them and that's why Hayes was working on the leg in the half crab and AJ was selling it and it, it was going you know and then they showed replay on what might have hurt AJ two things that could have done it okay nice um, the match ends though the ref says nope he can't continue this is done and I'm like I have seen this and worse and the ref wouldn't wave off the match so okay but he calls it the match is waved off and I'm like how y'all gonna do this that's why I want to know how y'all how y'all gonna do this you know because what should happen is forfeit involuntary forfeit Referee stops the match, so the though so the opponent wins by referee stoppage, and that's what happened. So Hayes wins via injury to AJ Styles, and the fans were down. They won't. It was quiet. They were somber, and then from behind, Knight hit the snapmare driver that he calls blunt force trauma or BFT, and the fans come up, yay! Even commentary had to acknowledge it. Um, AJ was limping away. He was visibly frustrated and I'm like okay good job you know good job um then ah we get to uh the dumpster match so it's Chelsea Green versus Meachin and I had to note that this is the cleanest dumpster bin on the planet with bags full of assumed peanuts um then I had to note that this is mainly an indie style casket match and then they in commentary brought up the casket match, not casket, but uh, the dumpster matches that they've had. And I saw one, um, man, New Age Outlaws. And they mentioned that against uh, Terry Funk and uh, Mankind. Well, Chainsaw Charlie. And I remember seeing that thinking, this is stupid. Back then, when I should have been marking out for it, I was like, this is dumb. 
I just won't happy with it. But the match opens with Michin tossing green a kendo stick to make it even. I thought that was stupid. I was like, that's not bright. You're in the match. It's a dumpster match, right? The idea is to hurt your opponent, right? So they can't get out the dumpster. Why, why, why are you trying to make this a fair fight? You should have used both and waylaid on her. But Green not being allegedly experienced with the kendo stick, Michin gains advantage quickly but then tosses the kendo stick away and and then she eventually gets a table and that excited the fans. Green hit a destroyer sloppily, throws Michin into the bin but is denied closing the, the lid. The fans chant tables. Commentary wasn't even too happy about that. Michin gets the finish on, gets her finish on, places the trash can over her and hit a diving senton. So there we go. And I, it looked brutal. To be honest with you, it looked brutal. And I'm, she hit Green in the best spot possible. She did, but she could have broke her arm. She could have broken a rib. So they did the best they could with that. And I'm pretty sure they talked that over. I'm hoping that they did. Um, Meech and Tate place the table across the dumpster and the fans are so up for that. Piper Niven attacks Meech and then throws herself into the side of the bin. Yep. And so Meech and power bombs green through the table into the bin and it closes the lid to win. Green climbs out of the bin, the dumpster, covered in stuff that she poured onto herself to make it look bad. And I thought that was the stupidest part of the whole match. I really did. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because when they each got thrown into the bin, it was Meechin got bags out and beat her with the bags and there was no crap all over the bags. They done played in the thing and all of a sudden she thrown in there and then just crap all over her, right? I just thought that was terrible. I thought it was terrible. So then they showed the trainer working on AJ Styles' ankle. They said it was in a nearby medical center and it was far from medical center. It looks like the the consummate backstage room, like not the locker room, but just look, this is the side area. So if something goes down, we can work on you, or maybe there's a coffee break area nearby or something, but that was not even, no medical room would have walls like that. They wouldn't have that one lamp in the corner like that. Matter of fact, I can't think of a medical room with a lamp in the corner is oftentimes the you know the overhead lighting which is what they need to see stuff i've been laid up in a few hospital rooms and there's not been a lamp around um anyway bailey goes to the ring because she that's one reason why i'm like that first that dumpster match why i'm not so interested in women matches right now then bailey goes to the ring because she has something to say to her face nia Jax. She talked to Naomi about having something to say to her face. And so note, I I had to note, I get it. Promote the match at all all turns. I get it. It's just annoying. Like, just fight. Naya says, she gets in the ring. If you got something to say, say it to my face. I was like, this is the stupid that turns me off. Bailey said it twice, that she has something to say to her face. Called her out, told her to bring Tiffany if she's got to, and didn't budge when the champ entered the ring. <sighs> so that lets you know champ ain't gonna mess her up. Bailey picks up, um, Bailey picks things up a bit. Sights Tiffany will turn on Jax when she gets sick of being insulted by her, and I was like, okay. Tiffy rejects the notion and then tells her to bow down to Jax. Bailey calls her a stupid bitch and then the fight is on. Bailey defeats both and leaves the ring. That's basically what it. Shut him down, beat him down. It's over. Tiffy looks at the case and sees Jax slowly recovering and the fans start chanting cash it in. Tiffy's looking at the, the, the briefcase and then doesn't do anything. Um, you know, 
Tiffy notices, you know, and, and then Jax noticing what Bailey said could be true about Tiffany Stratton. So I had to note this scene, this, I was like, this started off boring and ended a bit okay. Tiffany's turn would have to place her or Jax as a baby face, and neither one is that. You cannot go on the fans' reactions for this one. You just can't. But the fans were still chanting, cash it in, and, and this leads up to the match with Naomi as she comes out, and I'm skipping that match. But you can't go on the fans' reaction to this. They don't like Nia Jax for all the right reasons. So, oh my goodness. Am I sleepy? Oh, oh man. I seem to recover from the doctor yesterday. No, he didn't hit me. Doctor didn't hit me. It was just, I examined, they dilated him and red dye and that bright light in your pupil so they can see the retina and stuff. It's awesome, but it's, it's, it hurts, especially with super dry eyes. And speaking about dry, I had to I had to skip that next match because I was like, you know, Naomi's gonna win because you know Tiffy is really the nothing. Naomi will win these matches until what the big match where she loses. But Naomi defeated Tiffy with the uh, reversal crucifix clutch, got the win, yay! And Naomi is doing the uh, I guess more legit version of uh former Sasha Banks now you know Mercedes Monet get the stuff in the hair pattern and stuff she the leopard thing I don't know what that was about but yeah so all right also what what, what else happened um this is I'm trying to remember this one I didn't write it down but Chelsea Green's in the back and she's covered and walking and it's like oh pew oh gross it smells terrible I'm like yeah yeah sure and all this is like, oh man, that's that's terrible. And Josie, I admit, her pout at this juncture was super cute. She was this this the first time I ever thought Chelsea Green was cute, and not in that attractive way, just just cute. Like if you see some, it's like, no, you can't have a piece of pie today, honey. And it's like, mm, you're like, oh, look at your little face. Still not getting it. But you know, look at your little face. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was cute. And then, but uh, Carmelo Haynes, he's like, you know, hey, I won. He's like, oh, you call that a win? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, he won. AJ couldn't continue, and he could have easily made the whole. I beat him down so bad he couldn't keep fighting. So what do you think? In any case, so backstage, Nia makes sure Tiffy will never betray her and suggest she sets her title shots on somebody else and I'm just like okay that's good I it, it, it bugs me Tiffany is somebody I want to I, I get tired of the same scrawny ass women wrestling but Tiffany Tiffany Stratton got a when they show her she got a really good build she looks strong she looked, and I'm like, should she be a power wrestler? And I'm wondering about that. What do y'all think? Should Tiffany Stratton be more of a power wrestler? Because she's got a good upper body. She don't have scrawny thighs and stuff. She's like, she's built for strength. I don't know. It just seems like she should be more of a power wrestler. Me Chin should be more of a technical. You know? Uh, I don't know. Just, I'm like, she got them broad shoulders. She need to be you know, messing somebody up, you know, a few clotheslines, you know, shoulder blocks, shoulder tackles. Uh, in any case, so look, next we get bloodline business. All right, so it's blood, it's, it's, it's the match, it's the match. So it's, um, let's see, whatever. The, uh, so why did he erase that? Why did he erase it? I had that all written out and it was looking all cool and stuff. Man, I'm annoyed. I was gonna read that whole thing with gusto. Um, oh nope, it didn't get erased. I just can't read. Okay, uh, so Bloodline makes their way to the ring with Jacob Fatu on the verbal boast, and it was so good. I'm gonna have to splice it in here. But it's the triple threat tag team title ladder match. See, I wish I could do the echo thing, but it's say five years since the ladder match. Okay, and had to do a lot of waiting, but uh, 
I like that promo so well, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit. I'm going to splice it in here so y'all can get a gander at that. So here we go. Hey, I love my tribal chief. My Tonga brothers, they love our tribal chief. Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, yeah, they love our tribal chief. DIY, Street Brothers, Cody Rhodes, hell, even Roman Reigns will love our tribal chief. And when you love our tribal chief, you learn how to respect our tribal chief. And when you respect our tribal chief, oh, Lord, you will worship our tribal chief. And if you don't know how to do none of those three, at the end of the day, you will acknowledge the real tribal chief. Solo! Acknowledge me. It should bug people that that promo was that awesome. <laughs> because that that outshines everything that solo sokoa has done and look after that promo solo did the right thing acknowledge me but man and i just love this intro i just i just love this intro i just love when they do it like that uh but he did the right thing acknowledge me the one finger but i'm like look at that juncture, one, it's hard for someone to look tough with blonde hair. It's hard. Number two, when Jacob cut that promo in favor of him, it made Jacob look more like a boss. Not over him, but you're like, so this dude can talk, he can fight, he can pro wrestle, it's like Jacob is the it factor and it outshine Solo Sokoa. Oh my goodness. And I forgot how smooth Tonga Loa's ring intro is. I was like, oh man, that's right. It slipped my mind. It was so, but man, I'm like, how you going? How you gonna outdo that? You know, Solo Sokoa looked more like the the, the goon. Ah, that is, it's gotta hurt, but you know, Solo's doing his style is just. Mm. So, let's get into this match. All right. <laughs> um. So you got the Bloodline, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. Versus DIY, Tommaso Ciampa, and Johnny Gargano, or Gargano, versus the Street Profits, Angelo or Angelo Dawkins, and Montez Ford with B Fab in their corner. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not keen on B Fab. She walks like a wrestler. She handles herself like a wrestler, but I've not seen her wrestle. Has anyone seen her wrestle? Can she wrestle? Is she dangerous? Is she stupid? Is she lack, lacking a lot? Is she not good on the mic at all, but she's good in the ring? Or is it vice versa? Is it great on the mic and sucky in the ring? Uh, I heard Cornette mention stuff about it, but I can't remember what it was. In any case, so both teams they gang up on the Tongans and just, that's just rational and dump them before taking a few liberties with them i wasn't a little happy with but okay fine fine um back from the break the both the, the baby face teams they climb the ladder and the bloodline stop them and i'm not calling them gorillas of destiny they don't even have an established name i don't know it might be some copyright stuff that they're fighting over because WWE might want to try to own that and they're like nope that's us who knows? They might want to get back their original music, Gorilla Tactics, which was mm, fire. Um, let's see. Um, here's a nice spot. Bloodline was holding up a folded ladder, and Montez Ford ran up, started climbing on it, and he, 
It's like, you know, he's jerking it, trying to get up there, throwing him off balance. So that looked good. I don't know if anyone could catch that. And they was looking off balance, so that that was good. But, you know, he they, they shook him off. You know, you heard me, sh- shook him off. So, uh, this was a dumb spot. Lowe is running with the ladder. Gargano gets into the ring, waits for it, eyes the thing, and runs into it with Lowe half the wiser. So, now, I need to put my foot down on this spot. Only because, look, to me, only a fool will blame Tonga Lowe for this. Because people want to say he can't wrestle, he don't know what he's doing. They find it funny from his mishaps and whatnot in the, honestly, I'm going to say decent, distant past. But Gargano wasn't even in the ring when Loa gained control of the ladder. And it looked highly impromptu. And Gargano, like Piper Niven and Nick Camarado, flung himself into the object very late. So, you know, you can't blame Tonga Loa for that. It's just some people don't need to do certain things. Don't run in the post when you run in five seconds after they moved out the way. Don't throw yourself into a, a, a trash can bin when, you know, three seconds after the person got out of the way. They done move, stop running. Let's do something else. Um, they did the pile-up dive, and the fans fell for it and chanted it was awesome. I'd be bored. You know, I'm bored with it now. I'm like, oh, they're fighting. They're, gaining, they, they're gathering up. Here comes a dive. And, yep, Montez Ford with the dive. So Ford gets a table under the verbal command of B-Fab and the fans pop for it. After the break, look, the fans want the indie garbage crap, but they want it done intelligently. So they want the same crap, you know, but they just want it done with some brains. But they also kind of can't wait for it. It's like, well, it's WWE. We like them. Let them do it because it's them. They can get away with it because they're WWE. No, you need, you know, you, how often do you hear the, the chant, this is wrestling? Just keep that in mind. I've heard it twice. So, so Ford, he gets the table under verbal command, as I said, and I think he set it up on the outside. Couldn't tell because they went to a commercial break, but after the break, DIY, they hit Shadow Machine on Tonga Loa. And then they hit their finish. Um, yeah, then they hit the finish on low the ladder on his head. So they got that. And then Gargano climbs the ladder and Dawkins yanks him off. Street Profits hit. And I only mentioned that because he was climbing the ladder, um, which is a potential finish of the match. The actual finish of the match. Um, Street Profits hit their finish as Ford front flips over the ladder to hit the aided net breaker. So I thought that was awesome. Dawkins climbs, um, and then Thomas stops him for, you know, some booze. And I'm like, the champs are supposed to, like, you know, and a little bit of the heel in me is like, y'all stop booing. Y'all don't even know what this is. You know, just, <laughs> I can't help that. I'm like, man, you know, y'all y'all suck. You don't, you don't like G-O-D? Y'all don't like the, you know, Jacob Fatu? You don't like Solo? You know, y'all don't even know what y'all like. They should, they should be getting cheered out of the, the awesomeness that they are. Okay, Solo not so much. But the others. B-Fab takes a chair from Tama. And I'm like, okay. And DIY, they hit the bloodline with chairs. And they just go to work on them with the chairs. Just beating them down. And I'm like, what is it about Tama and Tonga that just says, whoop these two. Just whoop them. Just just get them down on the floor and just whoop them. Every, Cody's done it. Kevin's done it. Reigns has done it. DIY done it. Everyone just get chairs and just whoop them. I, I'd be mad at that presentation. I'd be mad. But then with B-Fab interjecting herself into the match, I'm like, Fatu should join in, right? Or Solo. It's fair now. But... Spoiler, they don't. So, with help from DIY, Ford hits a frog splash on Tonga Loa through a table on the outside. Both teams beat down Tama Tonga. Tama Tonga fights with, like, fist of fury. 
while up in this the the reverse seated position on uh, I think it was Dawkins shoulders and he gets power bound onto the announce table and that just collapsed that just looked brutal so then DIY DIY do it yourself beat down Dawkins and get the ladder so now the fans are like oh no you know they're kind of torn but I'm like this is a triple threat this this right here you you can't be booing you can't be upset well wait, everybody gonna win two teams tag title holders I ain't no so they beat down Dawkins they got the ladder in place and and, and got it in place to climb Ford knocks down Gargano Ford leaps onto the table and he starts on, 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 onto the ladder he starts fighting all four men are up on top on this ladder well at least halfway up Dawkins is forced to backdrop Champa onto a ladder in the corner and they crush that ladder it's crushed it's not it's not usable it's dead the ladder had a family you know and the family's gonna miss that ladder you know the aluminum family is is, is crying right now and then Tonga Loa he tilts over the ladder sending Ford and Gargano into a ladder in the another corner crushing it family ain't gonna miss that ladder that ladder, that that ladder was a really heavy smoker and a violent drinker so the family is not gonna miss that ladder at all I know I saw it in the paper so then the fans boo loudly because they know what's coming and they know how it needs to end they know how it's going to end because they're not going to get their way their momentary cheer Tama holds the ladder best he can while jacked up which was good while Loa who is not as messed up he gains the belt to retain the, the 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 tag titles solo and jacob come out with hugs and celebratory salutes for the bloodline faction and that's how that ended and that was great and look let me go ahead and call out the fans on this real quick let's say diy or street profits won them belts they would have had them belts for two weeks before y'all would have been like what they'd have been champions too long with very few of you saying, man, I hope they hold on these for a while. It must be like, nah, I'm getting kind of bored with them. Two weeks minimum, a month maximum. Cody had the belt for a month and people was like, I don't know if he should be champion anymore. And he had the title defense. Not even had his first one, they got tired of him. So you can't listen to the fans on most things. You know, you want to have long-term champions best that you can. That's what you want. So that's what they got. They're getting long-term champions that puts prestige on belts. So when someone does win them, it's worthwhile. And so I'm going to get up out of that. It is 3.43 p.m. And I'll be watching Bad Blood, the original WCW event. I'll be watching that tomorrow when the internet traffic isn't so high. You know, so... With that, this has been Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary, Friday Night Smackdown-ish. And with that, I want you all to be cool, be chill, be safe, so that I can see you next time.